So, you know, if we look at what we've got, we now have these surfaces here and we're just missing the connection between these. So let's see what we could do. We've got uh, this line here. You know, if I select that one and select this one, I'm not expecting something to happen. I've got an open profile and a closed profile. But what I could do is I could switch back to this first one and I could go from this point down to uh, a certain section along this edge here. Now it's asking me, you know, where do I want to go next? The next place I want to go is around to the other side. So I'm going to click on the other side of that. And now I'm going to come back up and I could click somewhere in the middle, but I think it's best to click on that point here. And now I get this nice preview. So I'm utilizing one side of a boundary patch and then just a piece of one of these periodic patches. And what's nice, again, I could always grab this point, move it along. What I could, I could kind of see that up to here it goes, but there, no more preview. So that's kind of where my limitation is. So it's kind of a good trial and error. How far back can I go? How far can I push the limits? Not that far. This is the perfect point. So let's go ahead and create that patch. Now here we could see that we've got these three coming together and we've got this one here. Let me just hide this. It may be a little easier to see. So, you know, we've got a good amount of this geometry uh, up here. Let me go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. So, you know, here we've got uh, this one coming all the way down. Same thing over here. Uh, so maybe what I want to do is I want to start on this point, this corner go to this corner. Now it wants to know how far up do I want to go for this one? Maybe that's a good point. And we'll come across and go over to here. And it automatically predicts that I want to use this one. And let's go ahead and click the check mark. Again, this is what we have. So we need to connect this one to this one. So we'll do the same thing that we did on the other. We'll go from this point up to somewhere along here. We want it to go around in this direction over here somewhere and then come back right to that point. Now I could grab this point, drag it around, see how far I can make it. I want to stay on that edge. Notice I can drag it off the edge. So you want to do make sure that your mouse kind of traces that edge as you go. And we'll bring it around kind of to the, the quadrant point. Looks like that is our boundary. So we'll go ahead and click the check mark. So again, if we hide the mesh, all we're really missing right now uh, is the wall in here and coming down there. So let's see what we can do here. If I switch to this tool guide and select this edge and then select this edge, we get this preview going across. Now, up over at the top here, it looks okay. It's a little wavy. If I want to add some better curvature, you know, maybe I'm going to, you know, bring it down here and, and maybe we'll do uh, one more uh, patch in this region afterwards. Now down over here, that doesn't look too good. It's kind of going around the outside. We don't want that. So I could always just drag this in add a new control point and now I've got it going across there. So, you know, here I can go across the two, click the check mark. Now I've got that center face. And if we hide the mesh, this is just that last region. So let's see what we can do here. This is no longer a full edge going around. So I could pick this part and this part, and now it's going to create that last piece between them and use the edges of the existing surface in order to uh, join them all together. And now if I hide this, we've done that whole entire bottom region. We just have one more area to do that on this one. So I believe we're going from this edge to this edge, get that nice patch. Uh, I might want to go ahead and try to drag this up or, you know, maybe I'll just leave it here and this will be the final patch that we do. So we'll click the check mark. I just like to hide the mesh to see what's left. We've got that one patch there. So let's go ahead and show the mesh again. Pick this edge, pick that edge. It assumes the third, click the check mark. And now we've got that model finished. So you could see the, the bottom and the other side piece of cake. Uh, you know, if we really want to finish up this model, it could just be a matter of going from here to here. Now, here is actually a situation that I did want to point out. In at the beginning, I did one side as two and I did the other side as one. Notice the differences. It 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 really controls what you select and what you patch between. If I go from edge to edge, I can really only pick two. So I could either go to the bottom one or the top one. So what I might have to do in this scenario is just pick points where I go from 
this point here to that point there. And actually right now it's capping off the bottom, which looks pretty good. So I'm just going to click the check mark. And we've got this one last area. So maybe I go from this edge at the bottom to this one at the top. It uses uh, almost both trajectories. Notice here it's missing a little bit. So I may just want to drag that over onto uh, that existing trajectory or that, sorry, that existing surface. Snap it right to there and hit the check mark. And so now we have the finished design. Now, if we hide the mesh, notice it's still a surface body. And it looks like we got all the different areas, but you know there may be some areas, especially along here, where I really had one, two, three, four, five edges. You know, I really should have done this in two. And again, I was rolling dice, so I overstepped the boundaries of the tool, but that's okay. I could always undo and make and do this as two faces, but if you've used Space Claim before, you'll know, notice we have a great suite of repair tools. Now we have a single surface, so Stitch probably isn't going to find anything, and it doesn't. But Gaps does. Gaps finds the edges that aren't joined up, and there may be a little space there. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead, just zoom out a little bit, and click the check mark. And with the first click of the check mark, it does two of the three. And if I just click that check mark again, now it does the third, and now we have this reverse engineered bottle. Now, you may be looking at the model thinking, well, it doesn't have the same detail that the original scan does. If we see here, we could see the, the waves going in this direction. Uh, one thing I want to point out, if you look at this side where we did one big patch here, that was whatever number of samples we had, I think it was like 50 distributed from top to bottom, versus on this side where we actually did two. So it was 50 samples here and then 50 there. And you can see this has way more curvature. Again, on this side, we just did one, so it didn't. So kind of looking back on this, it would make more sense in the areas where we want detail to have smaller patches or just or, and also increase the sample size. But you know, I don't want to start this over. I just want to fix one area here. So I have a couple options. I could delete this face and maybe try, you know, uh, doing lines, you know, the boundaries across. Uh, but I like the bottom. The bottom is fine. So what I can do is I could either use our split tool that allows me to split a face. Now, in this scenario, I could either use UV cutters, which aren't too helpful, uh, a perpendicular cutter off of an edge, maybe good enough, or there's two points. But again, that only gives me uh, here it's just following the curvature, and I don't really want it to go up like that. In the sketch group, we have a tool called Face Curve, and I could start on an edge. I'm just going to uh, pick a point on this edge. I can pick a point going across if I want, similar to setting up the skin surface tool, or I could just click on the other side. Now, I can actually continue on to other faces if I want, or I can just go ahead and click the check mark. Now, this might have been a little too low, but it still gets the point across. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face. Now, if you find that it's picking facets on the mesh, if you scroll your mouse wheel up one, it'll find that face underneath. You can select it, and then you need to right-click and delete. If you hit delete on your keyboard, that's actually a shortcut for fill. So now we're back to the surface with uh, an open uh, uh, face right there. And we'll go and grab the skin surface tool again. And instead of picking points, I'm going to use edges as boundaries. So I could try out a few different scenarios. I could try from this edge to this edge. And we get that preview across, and I can just hit the check mark. Now, here, uh, it may not fit perfectly along the right-hand side because, remember, it needs four boundaries, uh, but I believe there are three segmented faces here. But we're still going to need to redo part of this patch right here simply because those um, waves do go into that side. And the same will be true on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, it was uh, smooth and flush like the face we're replacing. Uh, so we don't want that flat face to match up perfectly here. We're gonna have to redo this one so that the curvatures match up. But I just wanna show here that if I hide this, you can, let's go ahead and turn on that grid. Here you can see the waves are now in that face. So uh, just the idea that if you want more detail, you want to do smaller patches along with uh, uh, changing and increasing the settings for samples and smoothness. Remember, smoothness would remove these waves, less samples will as well, uh, and larger patches.
Thanks for watching and have a great day.